All right, folks. Uh, good morning, everybody. We're going to call this meeting to order. And uh, for the sake of uh, I'm going to keep this move, uh, meeting moving on. Uh, fortunately, we have uh, Commissioner Davis with us today. He's not feeling the greatest. But so for his benefit, I'm going to keep this meeting along. So as we get into areas, uh, there won't be any uh, luck at the show. So uh, uh, we first of all have uh, Dr. David Lull with us. Uh, Heritage Planning Board of Developmental Disabilities. Uh, thank you, David, for being here. He's been here a little while about what's going on. Thank you very much, Commissioner, and thanks to each one of you for being here. And uh, we want to continue to move along, as you've said. And so I brought some team members with me today who are going to come up and do this presentation because over at least the last 10 years that I've been involved, we have had the great fortune and opportunity to be in front of you regularly. And you oftentimes have heard from me. And so we thought perhaps you might want to hear from some of our great Fairfield DDT members who are actually getting it done. I'll just start by very quickly building a little organizational context, which is which are things that you already know. You know that the County Board of Developmental Disabilities exists to bring about a vibrant community where people lead fulfilling lives and make meaningful contributions. What that means is every day we are working to support people on their journey toward greater independence. It is the reason that Fairfield DD exists. We support some 1,600 now people across Fairfield County in every municipality, in every village, in every township, every place. We have people that we're supporting in every school district, all eight of the school districts. We have kids that we're supporting. And so as we support them, this mission is at the forefront of our mind. And you can see our compass of values. And today we're going to focus on a couple of these values that we have particularly independence, which I talked about as the core of what we're working toward, innovation, sustainability, and collaboration. So you're going to hear from our team members and how we are moving this forward. We have worked to remove the stats and the numbers in great measure from this to talk about the innovative and unique things that we're doing as a County Board of DD. And so uh, I want to introduce very quickly the next speaker, which is Michelle Dexter. But before, as she's coming, let me also point out that our board chair, Sharon Scruggs, is here and so we're thankful for Sharon and her leadership of our board as we continue forward. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Michelle Dexter. I'm the Medicaid Services Supervisor at the Fairfield County Board of DD. Thank you for having us. My topic this morning is sustainability and sustainability as we know, is meeting those needs of folks in the present so that those and future generations can also meet their own needs. We have to be good stewards of tax dollars. It ties directly into our mission, as kind of David led off there. We're a continual state of being educators. Some folks feel like we have to um, support and take care of everyone, and we want folks to see people for their abilities. People with disabilities have many abilities, and we want to see that, you know, help people understand and see them as people first. These are just sustainability development and, you know, the components of sustainability where the social development ties to our missions to make meaningful contributions, economic development. As a global agency, things that we've done um, with our Discovery U program, which is a um, training program focused on employment. We had that in the mall and it served its purpose for several years. We kind of reevaluated as our lease was up because we are we have less staff there because people with disabilities was actually working out in the community in businesses. So we made the decision to close that as people are getting their services out in the community, and that's that's our goal. That's where we want folks to receive them. Environmental sustainability. We have services now that you know not always are within program walls. Again, they're out in the community. We also have partnerships. We um, have supported individuals, you know, with um, like Tiff and DC, you know, and, and did partnerships receiving services. We all want a just, peaceful, and inclusive society. And, you know, we're just a part of a person's life. 
we're not the whole picture. So we partner with other resources. We want folks to have their own vision, develop their own communities and achieve their best life. Reflecting on our mission, making sure it's, you know, the things that that person is, it's purposeful and meaningful to them. We embracing our role as a connector of resources and provide options whenever possible. We do waivers is what we fund in our county and, you know, it provides services for folks in our community. But not everyone has a waiver. Only 30% of the folks that we serve have a waiver. And we serve about 1,500, 1,556 <laughs> individuals. With those waivers, we're a payer of last resort. So waivers don't fund everything a person needs, but we find resources that do to meet their needs. Waiver funding composed of federal, state, and local dollars. Um, it's about 60% for the federal state piece. We about 40% kick in those local dollars. This kind of shows you just kind of the average cost as you know time goes on, costs go up, um, rate increases, et cetera. It's why we have to worry about sustainability. The best resource we can offer someone is our staff. I learned that about 20 years ago when I came to Fix All DD. I found out who knew what, and that's, you know, I kind of gleaned from them everything that they knew. And we have excellent staff who put their passion, expertise, and resources into everything that we do. These are some community partner and resources that is already in our community that we utilize a lot. One of my favorites was um, the SMART team at CFD, a group of retired guys who actually go out and build um, ramps for folks that have accessibility. Very cool resources. Another one in Baltimore. I could talk about all these in depth, but I won't. <laughs> these are ones that currently exist in our community. What I'm going to get to is it's our job, you know, us at Fairfield DD, you guys do it in your role every day, but it's everyone's job to look at and reevaluate, constantly look at everything we do through the lens of sustainability because we know our resources are limited. One way we do this, and I'm excited that Lori's going to talk about technology as a way to deliver services instead of using people, using technology. Always accessing grants when we can, partnerships, as I mentioned one earlier, and then those resources. Um, Again, it's on all of us to work together to continue to look at sustainability as we serve for Trump County. Thank you. Good morning. I am Jenna Traeger, and I'm the Early Intervention Supervisor at Bearfield DD. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the growth that we're seeing and the amount of referrals that we're getting for early intervention, and then also talk a little bit about the unique partnerships that we have going on with um, our team and then a lot of different community members. So some of the referrals are climbing. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these, but some of the main things that we're seeing right now are the impacts of COVID-19. Um, we serve zero to three. So we have a lot of what they call COVID babies. Um, we're seeing a lot of social emotional um, developmental delays. We're also seeing a lot more communication delays centered around that. So that's um, going right into that increase. And then also we're seeing more kiddos um, affected by the opioid epidemic. So um, not necessarily having diagnosis of um, neonatal abstinence syndrome, but we're seeing a lot more exposed and a lot more families that um, have kiddos that are in foster care, a lot more kiddos in kinship care, which is um, affecting the mental health um, of our infants. So these are the trends kind of across the state. I'll kind of go over them really quickly, but you can see um, the trend is going upwards. So in 2022, um, in February, we had 12,103 across the state. And where in 2019, it was only 11,119. In 2023, it's been projected that there's been a 5.5% increase in early intervention referrals um, through the state. So this is kind of a snapshot of our own. This is a snapshot of our own um, numbers here in Fairfield County. So in 2021, we served 352 families. And in 2022, when we did our cost report, we ended up serving 417 families. So it's really just highlighting the amount of families that are involved in early intervention. So I wanted to talk a little bit about our partnerships. 
We have a monthly playgroup that we facilitate at um, the Early Literacy Center at the Northwest Branch of the Library, and that's in Carroll. So we do that every single month, and we invite all of our early intervention families, and then we also invite all of our um, community families as well. So we want to make it an inclusive environment, but we also want to make sure that our kiddos in early intervention have enough exposure to peer interaction before preschool if they don't have that opportunity at home or in daycare or something like that. It also offers them a lot of um, pathways for families, parents to have parent-to-parent -parent interaction that maybe they don't get um, as much. And then we also have family and community events that we center in uh, different community um, areas around the county. So we've done community events at um, Art and Clay. We've done community events at Slate Run. Um, Pigeon Roost Farm, is, that's usually like a big hit. We usually have a lot of families that come up for that. Um, and then we also partner with AHA Children's Museum. So one of the unique things about uh, partnering with AHA is they've been able to um, let us uh, purchase a child care membership. So that allows us to take our families for free for one time to go through the space to see how they like it. Um, see if they maybe want to buy a membership for themselves, have admission, something like that. And then um, what we can do too is we can also take our lower income families and we can take them through there. And then we can also really push them to utilize their resources at the library to use passes for free um, to get more community involvement for those families as well. So, and then these are just a bunch of pictures. So these are pictures from our playgroups. So this is all of our staff, families, um, community members, all engaged at one of our monthly play groups. And then here we have uh, photos from those family events. But, and then the last two partnerships I kind of wanted to focus on were, we have a very close relationship with Ohio Guidestone. So we are able to have an early childhood mental health consultant that's able to come to our meetings weekly and they can offer behavioral strategies to our team while also doing um, consults and whatnot with our families so that what happens is if those families end up needing more uh, further mental health um, guidance or more uh, services, they're able to kind of skip that waiting list and go into services with somebody that they already have a relationship with, which is very, very important. Um, and then we also work very, very closely with Lakester Fairfield Community Action and Early Intervention. So with that being said, we're able to kind of do some of our home visits with the, um, with the Help Me Grow Home Visitors and with the Early Head Start Home Visitors. So they're in there every single week. Our early intervention staff is only in there once a month. So they're able to kind of collaborate and then help those families get those routines down. And I will pass it over to Lori. Good morning. My name is Lori Burbrush. I am the um, Assistant Technology Coordinator for Pickens County DD, and I'm also an occupational therapist. So I wear both of those hats as I'm doing my job. Um, I get to talk to you guys about enabling technology today, and I'm really excited about that. I wanted to frame um, what I'm going to talk about with this quote, um, which is, for people without disabilities, technology makes things easier. But for people with disabilities, technology makes things possible. And that's really what this is all about, is looking at using um, technology to enhance independence with the people that um, we work with. So um, what exactly is enabling technology? It is a combination of three different things. It's looking at universal design, assistive technology, and remote supports. Universal design is looking at the accessibility and inclusive features of environments and devices. So if you um, think of a laptop, for instance, and you can enlarge text, you can have contrasting backgrounds, you can use screen readers, we have speech to text capabilities. Those are all things that are developed and we don't necessarily use them, you know, each of us every day, but those are things that are available if we would need them, um, which is great for some people um, if that those features meet their needs. But if that technology isn't meeting their needs and you need to move into something more um, focused, then we're looking at assistive technology. And what that is, is any device or program system that is um, specifically designed and used by people with disabilities to enhance their functional capabilities. So it can be anything from low tech, um, solutions like using an adaptive eating utensil to moving on to mid-tech where we're looking at um, switch access. Maybe somebody only has a, the ability to use their foot and they can use a switch to um, 
scan through functions on a computer and make selections. So that would be like a mid tech, a mid tech kind of option. Or it may be that we need to look at using a high tech ideas communication system for someone so that they're able to express their needs and interact with um, people around them. So those are all things that we can consider. Also, we are um, using remote supports a lot more. And um, this is one of the areas where Michelle was alluding to with sustainability. We don't we do not look at remote supports from that standpoint, but it is an added benefit if you use remote supports because it's a cost saving measure. Um, what remote supports is is using technology, and it has to have some type of two way communication. So it should it could be a um, like a tablet where somebody can interact. It could be a camera system that has voice um, control as well, um, but. There are typically sensors set up in homes as well, and there's a program, um, a scheduled program that is developed for each individual where either the sensors will trigger things at a remote location and then the um, personal care provider who's trained will then, you know, hop on and provide the support that's needed for the individual um, or the individual can just request you know, hey, I need assistance, and um, they are there to support them, but there's not physically someone there in their home location providing that support for them. Again, all of these technologies, when we're looking at them, the outcome that we're always looking for is enhanced independence um, for the people we're working with. So taking a quick look at things that have happened in Ohio and Fairfield County over the last five years, when we're looking at technology, Ohio actually became a tech first state in 2018 um, through DODD. And then in 2021, the board created my current position, which is great because as an OT, I was working at Forest Rose and I was only able to work with like 60 students. Um, we have 15, over 1,500 individuals that we serve. Now in my role, I'm able to look at, you know, uh, have referrals made for any individual um, who may potentially benefit from assistive technology. So it's really expanded that the possibilities there. Um, in 2022, the Tech First rule went into effect, and that really is impacts it. waiver funding more than anything else. It means that um, any individual who is receiving waiver services, technology supports need to be considered before any homemaker personal care provider supports are authorized. So we need to make sure that it's, their needs can't be met using technology, which if they can, we want to go that route because that's only enhancing their independence. Oh, and I skipped my, the thing that I'm most excited about. Um, <laughs> January 2023, just um, a couple months ago, we finally got our smart tech environment set up at Forest Rose, and um, it's up and active now, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that on um, this slide here. So specifically, some of the things that we're doing to um, meet the needs and enhance independence of individuals using technology are um, I work to create an enabling tech screening tool that all of our independent or individualized support coordinators are using to um, interact when they're having discussions with individuals or families or providers. They're um, looking at technology and if anything is flagged, they will send a referral to me and then I go out and I do an assessment. I go into homes, I'm going into schools, workplaces, adult day programs, wherever it may be that um, we think technology solutions may be a good option for people um, to enhance independence. I'm, well, I shouldn't say I, the board is um, purchasing a lot of different devices for trial purposes and for um, loaning because it's so really, really important that we get devices into hands of individuals, if at all possible for them to try, because we're not, a lot of times devices can be abandoned if the person, you know, if we think, oh, this is a great thing, but it's not the right fit for the person. So having the opportunities to try those devices out is great. Um, and then also I'm doing a ton of education on just what enabling technology is. So I'm going into schools, I'm talking to providers, families, anybody I, who anybody who will listen to me, I'll talk to them. And then also conducting tours of the smart tech space at Forest Rose, and I invite anybody I'll check it out. It's um, a very neat space. It's a simulated kind of an apartment. Um, the majority of the technology in there is voice activated or voice controlled. So for people um, who may have physical limitations that kept them from doing things independently, they're able to do it just through voice technology. Um, there are things, the bed is controlled by voice, the vacuum, the blinds, fans, lights, anything, almost anything you can imagine. And it's great too because um, at Forest Rose, we can use it as a training area for students. So they're just being immersed in that technology and it becomes a part of their life. Um, so when they transition onto adulthood, 
um, some of those services that they may have needed direct care for, they won't need because they are they're able to do the um, skills because of having the technology in place. Um, let's see, what else do I have for you? Um, it's a great, oh, the other thing, we have probably 90% of our students use communication devices at Forest Rose, so that's another reason why having the voice controlled devices is extremely important because it's highly motivating. When you're able to have that control and independence that you haven't had and have a voice and be able to do it, it's a, extremely motivating for them and um, just a great um, space for learning and growing. So the very last thing I want to show you is bring this work there. Okay, this is Bonnie. She was a student at Forest Rose. She's now 23. She lives on her own. She has her own apartment now, but she does have 24 hour um, support. So somebody's in her home assisting her 24 hours a day. Her, um, she is wanting to look into technology as well as her um, mother and her providers to see what areas we can use technology to enhance her independence and then hopefully have that decrease in staff then um, over time. So she is using a communication device, which, and I counted that there are five different pieces of technology that are actually in this video. You can't see all of them, but she's using a communication device. She's in a wheelchair. We're using a wheelchair mount. There is the curtain that is voice controlled. We have the Wi-Fi network and we have Alexa. So there are six pieces of technology to make this one thing happen. But I want to see. Okay, I don't know if you can hear her response, but she said, oh, wow, I like it. Okay. That is an extremely simple thing that you and I just take for granted, but that's what this is all about, is um, you know, giving the control and the independence with the use of technology. So, so if I can make a comment, yes. a few years back, I believe uh, the East Adlex to a couple of your clients, mm -hmm. that opened up a brand new world for many of them, especially those who had Communications absolutely difficulties. I mean, it just it was amazing. I was able to witness it. Yes, yeah, I invite you to give you guys to come and see it. Amazing, sure. yeah. So, thank you. And, and to Lori's point, because we saw what that does, we created this position the position she's currently in now that allows her to work with all nearly 1600 people that we support in moving enabling technology forward. And so we're going to wrap up. I hope that you just get a quick sense of the commitment that our staff has to our mission. Three passionate, unbelievably talented team members here who invest every day in moving our mission forward and to supporting people on their journey toward greater independence. And so uh, we're thankful for the opportunity to present. Just very quickly, I'll mention, I hope all of you have on your calendar the 13th annual Celebration of the Possibilities, which will be at the Wigwam on May 17th. And in fact, today we have an important announcement. You may know if you've been there, and I think many of you have, that every year we give an award, several awards, to those who have helped push our mission forward, who have helped contribute to our mission and to support us. And uh, this year there will be six awards given. Two are the John Picard uh, Legacy Award, and those will be handed out that night. And those are secrets. We don't tell the people until they get awarded that night. But four celebration awards will be handed out. And the Fairfield County Commissioners are one of the awardees this year. The Fairfield County Commissioners have been unbelievably supportive of the Fairfield County Board of DD, and we can't say thank you enough for all of your support, for how you have helped us, uh, both in great times and in challenging times, and so we're excited to announce today that the three of you will be receiving a Celebration Award this year at the Celebration of Possibilities, so we hope you can attend and be a part. Thank you very much. Keep up the good work. He left quite a legacy, if you will. Uh, some of his new innovative ideas that uh, he brought forward, uh, and having a path forward for those who are less fortunate. Keep up the good work. So we'll be moving into our public comment section. Mr. If I might, please. When I talk, I cough, but I wanted to say thank you.
And I'll, uh, I'll be uh, Commissioner Davis's voice a little bit more, you know, in these recent years, COVID has been a concern. Uh, he has tested negative, but we do have him a little bit, what he refers to as Siberia, <laughs> uh, but just a little under the weather, but not, not any COVID concerns. So uh, public comment uh, section, and if you would uh, try to be as brief as possible because of the time constraints today. So who would like to be first? I see Commissioner. Uh, we have developed a part of our development ability with this. This is important. This morning, the name is Ray Steeman. 2444 West Point Road, Lancaster, Ohio. And I picked up something with the help of my wife that I'd like to share this morning. I'll try to be brief. Uh, when President Trump came into office, he had put somebody in his cabinet that they had to dismiss real early in, the, in his uh, service. That was General Flynn. And General Flynn was on the computer the other day and he said this. The following words were spoken when he had to all the citizens of the United States. Subversive elements of our own government. This is uh, General Flynn's words in our greater battle in and of the last 40 years has been the diversity elements of our own government. Battlefield de deception is the main war field these days, which includes subversing our constitution, subversing our Bill of Rights. The destiny of America is really going to be determined by whatever path you and individuals that you know choose to walk on right now. If you choose to do nothing, then you can expect nothing and nothing good will come of it. But if you choose to stand up, step up, speak up, you know there are going to be risks involved and then you are not only changing your own destiny, but the destiny of America. For the destiny of your freedom, faith, and family, we need to push back, push back, and push back in this nation if we want to keep it. So with that thought, I would like to turn to prayer. Lord, you control it all, and we come before you this morning knowing that we can do very little but we can do a lot together. Help us to work in our local communities as we've been shown here this morning and work positively, encouraging one another. And with your help, Lord, we will succeed. We know we are on the right path with your help. Amen. Thanks, Ray. Good morning. When uh, they were speaking about um, well, these uh, development, that brought back back memories. Wasn't that started back in the seventies by Dolores Carlisle? Yes, she was a patient of mine, and boy, was she uh, ever handicapped. She had rheumatoid arthritis, and it deformed from childhood, and this deformed every one of her joints in her body. So, I didn't know so much was uh, uh, attributed now to the children, though. Okay, the uh, <laughs> headlines for COVID. Dr. Stripped of board uh, certification. And he says he's being targeted by corrupt medical establishment for promoting ivermectin and warning of COVID vaccine risks. Now, <laughs> I didn't know that uh, the government controls what 
what the uh, doctors are able to say to their patients. Next, um, um, was the uh, U.S. doctors group says withdraw the COVID shots from the market now. The regulatory agencies are corrupted by conflicts of interest, lack of transparency, lack of accountability. And it goes on to say the current tallies over 30 vaccine adverse event reports that uh, current tallies uh, over 34,000 reported deaths related to the COVID vaccine and yet unanimously voted 15 to 0. Uh, yeah, they recommended uh, the regimen of routine childhood thoughts. No, 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 don't do this. Next, uh, watch. Watch the next uh, thing that's on your uh, sheets there. Moderna CEO lies to Senator Rand Paul during testimony on COVID vaccine. And Moderna CEO tells Senator Rand Paul that they paid the NIH $400 million in royalties last year. Next, crucial information. How to advocate for yourself or a loved one in the hospital. Now, just because you end up in the hospital doesn't mean that you're, you aren't free. You have patient's rights, you have medical freedom, and you have constitutional, national, and human rights that never, never, never go away. Next, ten thousands, tens of thousands of European women demand answers about menstrual effects from COVID vax. Next, 5,162,000 5, increase in excess debt. Australian government data shows this, that the dam is breaking in the mind-blowing statistics. Yeah, this is a massive increase from 21 and an astronomical increase from 20. Next, the last is a cartoon that I saw, and I'm going to describe this to you. It's titled Brain Shrinking News, and it's a cartoon of newscaster giving all three facts in the same report on the same date. First is, she's saying, getting your COVID shot will prevent serious illness and death. And then it goes to this. In other news, excess deaths are due to post-COVID complications. And then she goes to this. So remember to get your COVID shot to prevent serious illness and death. Now, all of these from the same, from the same newscast, the same day, and the same hour. Kathy Taylor, Habitat for Humanity in Southeast Ohio. Just real quick, we are starting with our volunteers in Pleasantville uh, April 12th, and I'm hoping County will come out again this year in Pleasantville. Uh, we are excited because uh, the homeowner, Dawn Benka, she, future homeowner, uh, she works for a community action here in uh, Lancaster Fairfield County as well. So I know she's super excited. This will be her first home. Uh, she can't wait to get her family and grandkids there once it's finished. Um, to enjoy that time together. So April 12th, if you are in Pleasantville, 209 South Main Street, it's the only thing with a giant hole in the ground and a foundation. So <laughs> check it out. Felt really excited. So, that's okay. so, Thank you. Who would like to be next? Morning. Uh, Mary and Barry, 5500 Canal Road, Pleasantville. Um, there are numerous reasons to oppose the Eastern Cottontail Project. I wish to focus on one dearest to me, and that's food. I did not grow up on a farm. It's not in my blood. Next, it's something I've learned to value and appreciate. So dec decades ago, I was given a booklet by Roger Wolf. He's a conservationist extraordinaire. It was the conquest of the land through 7,000 years by Dr. W.C. Lowermilk, and he was the former assistant chief of soil conservation services. Dr. Lowermilk conducted an extensive 18-month worldwide study of civilizations of the past, focusing on their rise and fall based on the relationship of soil management. As he learned, failures were more numerous than successes, as told by the ruins of ancient and not so ancient civilizations. 
He discovered that the mismanagement of soil toppled empires and wiped out civilizations. As he stated, food comes from the earth. The earth rewards richly the knowing and diligent, but punishes inexorably the ignorant and the sloth. That the partnership of land and farmer is the rock foundation of our complex social structure. Preserving farmland should not be an afterthought, but a major priority for Fairfield County. What legacy will Fairfield County leave for future generations? I pray that it will be the diligent and knowing and not the sloth and ignorant, that we will write a history of exceptional stewardship of our land. I implore you to create a resolution prohibiting industrial solar in Fairfield County. Industrial solar will destroy the soil. The value of farmland cannot be overstated. If the soil is destroyed, then our liberty of choice and action is gone, condemning this and future generations to needless privations. For even you and I will sell our liberty and more for food when driven to this tragic choice. There is no substitute for food. Commissioners, thank you for your time. Thank you. Who would like to be next? <laughs> Thank, thank you all for coming. Thank you for your comments. Anything from legal? Nothing specifically, Commissioner, but I will say that uh, you'll notice that Stephen's not with me today, and uh, he's home with his wife, and they just had their baby girl last week. Yeah, all I, of, all of I was going to mention that, and uh, oh, whoops, what's the uh, baby's name? No way. Yeah. But, uh, if you talk to Stephen, congratulate him for us, if you would. Yeah, yeah. County administrative update, Ani. Yes, and just uh, taking a moment to give a shout out to Commissioner Fix, who is joining us virtually today due to uh, work commitment. Um, and so, hello, Commissioner Fix. <laughs> <laughs> um, quick update here, American Rescue Plan update. From the 30.6 received, 23.4 million has been appropriated. 12 expended and 3.9 million encumbered or obligated. Highlights the resolutions today. The review packet does contain a list of administrative approvals. And for today's voting meeting, there are 21 resolutions. Just a couple of note, we have five uh, proclamations that we will be um, addressing today. We also have a resolution amending the leadership conference date and location, a resolution approving a grant match transfer in advance from the general fund for the Ohio Airport Grant Program and ODOT, a resolution to approve an agreement between Fairfield County and the Pickerington Local School District to ensure the school district complies with the same requirements as other public utilities to use any road right of way. Jeremiah, do you want to add anything to that one? All right, perfect. Thank you. A resolution authorizing an approval of a contract between the Fairfield County Board of Commissioners, the Sheriff's Office, and uh, the Perry County Board of Commissioners and their Sheriff's Office as well. That is a renewal of a contract there. Heard any budget updates? I just wanted to update on the preliminary sales tax numbers that came in for April. Um, year over year, it's an increase of 14%. Non auto up 8%. Auto, or, yeah, non auto up 8%. Auto up 38% over the 22 preliminary results. And the 2023 January through April actuals are about $611,000 or 6.5% higher than 2022 actuals. Thanks very much. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. I hope it continues. Just a quick note of recognition. Rachel McCoy of DD did receive the 2023 Jane Johnson Award at the Ohio University Celebrate Women Conference. So congratulations to we, Rachel. We, we need to congratulate. All right, for a calendar review, the commissioners have the Regional Planning Commission candidate presentation today at 5 p.m. at the Record Center, the Adam H. Annual Dinner today at the Cheer Chalet at 6.30, the Health District Advisory Council meeting on March 29th at 7 p.m. at the Record Center, the Family Adult and Children First Full Council meeting March 30th, also at the Record Center, the Workforce Career Expo on March 30th at 9 a.m. at the Workforce Center. The 2023 State of the Schools March 30th at 11.30 a.m. at the Stanbury Career Center and Gals Learning Center. Hawking College State of the College March 30th at 5.30 p.m. at the Lodge at Hawking College. Morpsey 2023 State of the Region March 31st at the Hilton Columbus Downtown. The Fairfield County Safety Fair April 4th 
at 11.30 a.m. at the Fairfield County Fairgrounds at Sands Building, the three-in-one ribbon cutting at the down for downtown title and visage wealth and Saturday law on April 12th at 12 p.m. at the Middock Building, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Columbus, Ohio Temple Preview Tour, which is April 24th through April 28th, the 2023 Annual Trade Show and Awards Banquet, May 11th, the trade show starts at 4.30, dinner and awards at 6.30, and those and that is at the William B. Fisher Catholic High School, Pickerington Area Chamber of Commerce Annual Awards Dinner and Silent Auction, May 18th at 5.30 at the Wigwam Event Center. And for correspondence, from memo, we have a memo from Dr. Kerry Brown, the County Auditor, on March 23rd, subjects FBI Citizens Academy Board of Health Apportionments, elected official payroll dates, and the April month map of the month. Letters from residents regarding solar projects are also included in the packet. And there are two letters or uh, two articles from the Lancaster Eagle Gazette, one on March 21st and one on March 22nd, both written by Jeff Barron. The first one, will a connector road between US 33 and I-70 ever become a reality? The second article on March 22nd, county hires transportation consultant to look at local transit issues. That is all I have. All right. So, uh, Rochelle, if you would count me for the annual trade show and the picking to trade the chamber. Thank you. All right. So we'll be moving into our voting pattern. We're going to stay down here today. Do the table update. Oh, yeah, please. Okay. Yep. Uh, jail population March 21st was 259, with 33 of those being contracted. And today, the sheriff reports 264 with 37 of those being contracted. So if you would, please rise if you're able and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic to which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do yeah, we have any announcements? We do not. So, uh, approval of minutes for Tuesday, March 21st, 2023. I'll move. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Minutes passed to zero. From the Commissioner's Office, Resolution 2023-3.28.A, a resolution authorizing the approval of proclamations. Second. I'm, I'm sorry. Move A, B, C, and D. Second. So we have uh, several uh, several proclamations. The first uh, would be child abuse. And it's, it's kind of a shame. Child abuse prevention month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to continue with that. <laughs> it's it's kind of a shame that we have child abuse even in our vocabulary, quite, quite frankly. But uh, you folks who deal with that on a daily basis, you know, great work. So if, if you'd like to come up, please. So, Corey, this is probably, and I'm not going to read it just because of the sake of time today. Sure. So, it's a proclamation recognized in April as Child Abuse Prevention Month, and that's the key prevention, right? Absolutely. Corey, yes, thank you so much to the commissioners for recognizing the importance of child abuse prevention. Um, I have with me here today Dave Henwood, Carla Nelson, and Kara Fenney. Uh, managers with our administrative team and protective services and we hope that uh, we will see all of you on april 12th at our annual breakfast uh, it starts at eight o'clock and it is at vice church thank you very and, much and i'll be there all right picture yeah i will take two i'll take your pink <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three. One, two, three. Thank you. Good thing we got out of here.
<laughs> so the second proclamation, proclamation recognizing national crime victims right, uh, right week. So if you uh, we come forward. Maybe, yes. But now we have the deputy come forward also. Here in Fairfield County, we love our law enforcement. We're very supportive of all the work you guys do. Thank you, sir. So, I don't know if you would like to accept that. But uh, again, it's kind of just a little bit of So, again, thank you both for everything. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. 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 I'm going to say it. Thanks, John. I'm going to let Bennett. He's the rising star here. So, John and I are chair and co chair of the Environmental Stewardship Committee. And what that is is an employee led work group that focuses on projects that benefit the environment and the community. Um, we've got a couple projects we're working on right now that we'll be excited to announce in the coming weeks. And, uh, Hope everybody takes time to celebrate Earth Day. Thank you. I was going to be a self. So that would be cool. So uh, April uh, is Fair Housing Month. So we would like to come forward to help me back. Okay. Thank you. Like safety words. Sure. Well, we are beyond appreciative of the county and the commissioners and the support of Habitat for this mission of fair housing and all of the other organizations that are working towards this. In the you know, uh, housing is something that any of us take for granted. I tell you what, if you don't have one. And, and it's if it, it, in in this environment it's even more difficult of cost of housing, yeah. the cost of interest rates and so on and so forth. And so with with all those metrics in place, that kind of prevents people from having a house. And it's a difficult time. So it's, it's, have a tag, you guys do good work, who the good work? Good point too. We're not yeah. going anywhere. Okay. <laughs> Better not. <laughs> okay. Two, three, one, two, three. Thank you. <laughs> so this, uh, this is kind of separation in the sense. <laughs> April is National uh, County Government Month. So I mean, I'm sure. All right. right. Well, we'll receive this on behalf of all the county employees, almost a thousand of them. And those of you um, that have been around the county a while know when we go visit other places, Fairfield County does stand out. Um, we are, are known for our innovation and our vision and strategic planning. And I'm happy to have been a part of Fairfield County government for over 30 years. Um, there are, let's see, over 3,000 counties nationally that serve more than 300 million Americans. So the ones that we serve here in Fairfield County, we're very proud to do so. Yeah, and, and it's really all about employees. You know, we can have the greatest buildings in the world and so on and so forth, but the employees is what makes it work. We're, we're here to serve and to, to look after the residents of Fairfield County. So thank you. Yep. Okay. That's we get our official picture. Yeah. <laughs>
One, two, three. One, two. Right. So any uh, any discussion on the resolutions? We'll call please. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Commissioner Levesey. Yes. Motions pass 2-0. From Fairfield County Emergency Management Agency, Resolution 2023-3.28.E, a resolution to request for appropriations for receipts for EMA hazardous materials emergency preparedness rate fund 2890. Uh, EMA resolution. EMA. EMA resolution CNF. Second. Discussion. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Motions passed 2 0. From the Fairfield County Engineer, Resolution 2023 3.28.G, a resolution to approve an agreement between Fairfield County and the Pickerington Local School District Board of Education. County Engineer Resolutions GHI. Second. Discussion. Hey, you got a couple of bridges to replace there. We do. That comes up every year. We've also been working with Pickerton Local Schools on a, on a fiber project that they're, they're doing to connect all their schools for interconnectivity projects. So that's a lot of step in the right direction. Yeah, I can, ima I can imagine that being a, just a big deal. With the amount of students uh, Pickerton has, what, over 11,000, I believe. Yep. But he had some hurdles to overcome and uh, had a lot of help from Amy, the prosecutor's office. Thank you. Any additional discussion? All please. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Motions passed 2 0. From Fairfield County Family, Adult, and Children First Council, Resolution 2023 3.28.J, a resolution approving an account to account transfer fund 7521. So move. Second. Good discussion. Allow us to reimburse uh, my department. Okay. Additional discussion. We'll call, please. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Motion passes 2 0. From Fairfield County Job and Family Services, Resolution 2023 3.28.K, a resolution to approve a title. 4D contract between Fairfield County Job and Family Services, Child Support Enforcement Agency, and Attorney Jeffrey Pickup. Job and Family Services Resolutions, K and L. Second. Discussion. Seeing none, roll call, please. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Motions passed 2 0. From Fairfield County Juvenile Probate Court, Resolution 2023 3.28.M, a resolution approving an account to account transfer. Uh, juvenile probate court resolutions M N O. Second discussion. Seeing none, roll call, please. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Commissioner Levesey. Yes. Motions passed two zero from Fairfield County Sheriff. Resolution twenty twenty three dash three dot twenty eight dot p. A resolution authorizing the approval of a contract with the Fairfield County Board of Commissioners, the Fairfield County Sheriff's Office, and the Perry County Board of Commissioners and the Perry County Sheriff for housing prisoners in the Fairfield County Jail. Resolutions P and Q. Second. Discussion. I have a question on this, Commissioner. I just am not recalling. Is this a new contractor continuation? Continuation. Thank you. Additional discussion. Roll call, please. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Motion to pass 2 0. From Fairfield County Utilities Department, Resolution 2023 3.28.R. A resolution to approve the contract award for the 2023-2024 lawn mowing contract with Green Cuts Lawn Maintenance. Diligence. <clears throat> Resolutions R S T. Second. Discussion. Yeah. Any additional discussion? All please. Commissioner David? Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Motions passed 2 0. On payment of bills, resolution 2023 3.28.U, a resolution authorizing the approval of payment of invoices for departments that need Board of Commissioners approval. So moved. Second. 
Discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Motion passes 2 0. The next regular meeting is scheduled for April 4th at 9 a.m. Is there any item or just uh, <coughs> any item that uh, needs to be brought before the Board of Commissioners this morning? Commissioner Levesey, if I might. Please. So I just wanted to publicly thank Commissioner Davis for coming in on what obviously is uh, far from his best day. If if I had been in town, he would have been able to call off sick, but he took one for the team today, and I just really appreciate that. Anyone else? You did a very nice job, sir. But again, I, I, I uh, ditto what uh, Commissioner Fix said. Uh, thanks for being here. I know it's tough, but uh, we need to continue county business. And uh, again, thank you. And also, it's under an R. It's a new record. <laughs> so, any any anyone else at this time? If not, looking for a motion. Move to adjourn. Second. Roll call. Or um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>